wealth within. They gave me that feeling of trust. What you learned in the course was just mind-blowing. Amazing. It was phenomenal. It opens your mind up and makes you realise you don't know what you don't know. I've got the tools now. 100% worth it. Definitely get educated. Hello and welcome to Wealth Within's weekly hot stock tips. I'm Philip Tortevsky, Senior Analyst at Wealth Within, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Every Tuesday night, you can see me on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube, alongside two amazing professional traders, Janine Cox and Dale Gillum. Now in the show, we answer important questions around the stock market, cover lots of great stocks and help you become a better trader. Today, we'll unveil what's hot and what's not for you, our viewers. But before we dive in to this week's stocks, I am joined today by Dale Gillum. Good morning, Dale. Good morning, Phil. I'm looking forward to our chat today because the market is very, very interesting right now. It is. It is. It's had a nice little run up coming off a little this week, but very uniform. You know, Mm. we spoke about it a little bit off air that the market does give you these ebbs and flows. It's about identifying, is it just a natural pullback or are we seeing something? Well, there's lots of opportunities right now for those who are astute um, in their trading strategies. They are. All right. So let's get straight into it now on your screen. Is a watch list of the top 200 ASX stocks. And you'll see, obviously, from the best performers this week, Sigma Healthcare had a huge week up 40%. Um, what I find quite interesting about this one, I just want to zoom out a little, is that, you know, look how much the stock had been rising yeah. just prior to this huge rise. And you, you see a lot of, um, you know, examples of when some traders would look at this and go, oh, this is too much, I'd stay away. Mm. But really, what you're seeing is a market moving in trend and oh. just, you know, extending on that trend. So it's, it's one thing to to, um, you know, really these examples show you why it's so important to stick with that trend and don't expect that just because you think it's ready to roll over, that that's the case. Well, you, you're absolutely correct. I mean, there are a ton of, there's been a ton of opportunities to get into this stock since, you know, down at that low there back in, you know, 2020, it was it December 2021. There's been quite a few, because this is a monthly chart, so it's it's beautiful rise. And just trading the monthly chart, you would have made a mozza on this one mm. already. And obviously, you know, currently this week, you've made a mozza on the last week. You know, beautiful, big gap up, and then it just took off like a rocket. So to me, tons of opportunity to get in there. We have been saying healthcare for, for ages, mm-hmm. healthcare, energy, uh, and before that, materials as well. And all of those are moving at the moment. Energy is moving, healthcare is moving last week. Well, uh, materials pull off a little bit, but for the three weeks prior, materials was moving. But looking at that, you know, Fletcher building up 14.4%, Karuna Energy up 12.67%, Woodside up 9. Point. That's really exciting, all of this, uh, seeing all of this. Beach Energy up 8.9%, so Strike Energy up 7% looking really, really great. And mm-hmm. the Viva Energy down there at 4.14. So, and then Ampo up 4% as well. Here's our first healthcare stock, Cochlear. And when Cochlear is moving and CSL is moving, the healthcare sector goes. Oh, yes. Um, so look for healthcare, look for energy. Um, here, and here's Min still up, you know, 3.76%. I'm still, I'm still sitting around that um, on the edge of whether this is just a sucker's rally and sustainable yes. or whether it's start of a new trend at the moment. Still unconfirmed, so please be careful on it. But let's have a quick look at the other end. Zip down 8.6%. Um, you know, and that's pretty expected because it's well, had it's a beautiful run. run, hasn't it? Yeah. From there, you know, ARB Corporation down 8%. Um, New and Pharmaceuticals down around 8. Polynovo down around 8. IPH down around um, high sevens there, but uh, nothing too bad there, is it? You know, you know. Oh. Obviously, Webjet's down about six point six two. Qantas down five point six six. Flight centers down. So obviously, those areas are down, but nothing too annoying for me, I suppose. Well, considering you've got you know a few miners in there, and then you've got the big banks, obviously, which are naturally need mm. to come off. Everything that's falling right now really falls in that um, bucket of needing to come off anyway, yeah. and it's not so volatile itself. You're talking, you know, the top 200 with an average move of about 5 6% in a week, which is quite normal. So moving on, what is hot in the market this week? Well, on your screen right now is my hot stock tip for the week, which is ASX Limited Stock Ticker Code ASX. So on your screen right now are the monthly and weekly charts. And I want to start off on the monthly chart here, Dale. Now, this one, I will pre-caution that it is a my hot stock tip for the week. But as we go through it, you'll see why it is really primed to, to make some moves but it is still a little early. So I will just precaution everyone with that. Um, and just moving through the chart, obviously we've got the monthly chart here first. You can see um, really what's happened with this stock is quite 
interesting in the fact that the most um, significant fall was back during the GFC where the stock fell yeah. 61%, uh, 61%, sorry. Moving on, we have had the second largest fall with this particular stock being the 43% that's happened since the high in November 2021. What it's done in, in doing so is it's come back to a really important price level at around $56. And um, in fact, it's one of the most important levels uh, considering all the stuff that's happened. There's another one back down at around $30 or $40, but bar that, it's $50, $60 or $56 where we are right now. It's come back to, to this long-term momentum line. And why it's exciting to me and why it's my hot stock tip is what I am seeing with this stock, it is compressing right now. Mm. And if um, to show you that visually, I've marked these two lines here in the um, blue dash, then you can see that the highs are getting lower and the lows are getting higher. And even more to the point, if we zoom in, we're on a monthly chart here, look how these bars are actually trading within the previous bars ranges. So we're seeing real tight compression here. And that only means one thing. We're either, up. We're either gonna bust out up or we're gonna bust out down. I'm going up. Well, I hope so. It is up because we've come out of a, you know almost a fifty percent fall with this one. But this is this is all to be expected. And a lot of people think with the ASX it makes money out of brokerage, mm. and whilst it does, that's a very small percentage of what it makes money out of. The reason why ASX is going into these tight ranges and fallen away for quite a while since the GFC is simply because of corporate actions. They make yep. more money on listings and corporate actions than they do on the actual trading and people think you know if the market's bullish there's a lot of trading going on they that isx will shoot off like a rocket no that's not the answer yeah in the next couple of years we're going to see a lot of corporate actions we've seen almost none over the last 12 months two years so that's why it's in this sort of pattern at the moment yeah. so as the market starts ticking over there's already talk of more corporate actions that are coming up so this is where the asx is going to start making some money yes well uh, you know great point and with the underlying mm. and also the ipo um, stuff which i am seeing come out in the news that it is going to start ramping up over the next 12 to 18 months which is very exciting but that is it for my hot stock tip this week now we're moving on to a stock that should make you proceed with caution karoon energy stock ticker code k a r now on your screen is the monthly chart on the left and the weekly on the right now I want to start off on the monthly chart here, and obviously Karoon Energy, a stock in the energy sector which hasn't um, or been falling uh, quite a bit. But with this one, you know, since 2009, it has had a rough time of it falling away. But as we say with stocks, they go through these life cycles. They expand, as we saw prior to 2009. Then they find a periods of distribution, which we saw two through here again in 2011, 12 part of periods of contraction. And then at some point they reverse, they find accumulation, they base out and they start rising to the flip side. Yeah. This to me right now could potentially be at the early part of the new expansionary phase, which is very exciting if you're looking at it. And why I say that is because obviously, um, you know, this 43 month period that we've seen here or this rise coming out of the uh, April 2020 low is the longest rise in terms of time that we've had when you measure it versus this whole down move that's happened you know, since 2009. So we have seen buyers um, you know, exact bullishness for the longest, the second longest was around 17 months, which was this period through here. But again, if you look at the way this unfolded, very volatile, rangy, bouncing off highs and lows, that to me looks more like a, a accumulation or distribution period rather than a trend. Look at the difference. Nice yeah. trending move stock, higher highs, higher lows. And what's quite interesting right now is I've marked this, um, again, another form of compression with this stock. Obviously, it's getting lower in terms of the lows, but the we are seeing it start to tighten on, on the way down as well, or slow down on the way down as well, which again speaks to me that we are forming one of these, um, I guess, um, patterns in the market, which really lends itself to an expansion on the way up if it can break through. So I think any breaks above $2 is the right time to be watching this stock initially, but then again, it's about identifying your strategy, are you medium, long-term, where are you like wanting to get in, how much do you want to give the stock? $2 is the initial level you want to give it, especially considering it is trading at this, um, again, significant level of support around 150. So as long as it holds here, starts to break on the upside, I think there is definitely a trade in this one coming. Oh, look, I think, you know, I think you're, 100% correct. I mean, to me, stocks get too cheap. Mm. You know, to me, that's when people start 
when it's that huge big move down, eventually it just gets too way, way too cheap. But also stocks tend to hover around price levels yep. too. And especially mining stocks or cyclical mining stocks, you'll see them keep respecting different those levels. And if we go back to the chart, you'll see what I'm talking about on, on this stock is this is the whole history of Korean energy. And if I put a box, you know, uh, let me, if I can find our little box, where are we? There we go, there's a rectangle. If I just put a box, most of its price action in the whole history of this stock is fits in that box. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about probably 70, 80% of its history is in that box. And that's the sort of stuff I'm talking about. And understanding this as a trader, that stocks will come back to these sorts of levels is huge yeah. so that you can make profit. So it wasn't surprising that it's come right back into these low levels and it's trading most of its time around this box. So breaking above this sort of box or this level around 240, 250, that just signals a time for it to expand out of it. Mm -hmm. And some of these mining stocks are great because they just springboard so fast out of these areas when they're when whatever the commodity or whatever they're doing, and this is an energy stock or whatever, they just take off mm. and you go with them. Well, it's all about the strategy, isn't it, mm. when you're talking about these stocks? Because as you said, they are very volatile. It's coming into a sector that is starting to show legs now. So really, yeah. it boils down to how you are going to capture that volatility to the upside when it does present. So moving on, lastly, what's not hot in the stock market this week? Well. APA Group stock ticker code APA. So let's get into the charts right now. Now, interesting, this stock obviously, I'm not having the best time of it since 2022, falling away. And the question really is, when will this fall end? Obviously, if we just apply another horizontal line through here, there is, or there was really strong support at around $8 or just a bit above $8 through here, where, you know, at one point in time, you thought, okay, potentially this stock is going to find that base. And that's why I've marked this um, rectangle box here in the purple would bounced off it a few times, but never really trying to go on with it. And that's the point. It was still trading very um, uniformly under this momentum or trend line. Fallen away since then, we're coming into the next level of support, which is um, coinciding with this October 2016 low. But again, one week, one month, considering the nature of the fall does not make a reversal. And what we've seen, if I zoom it out on the monthly chart is we've had a bit of a, a spring up in price only for October to start falling away again, which doesn't look overly um, bullish at all. Even in the shorter term time fra frame, 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 <laughs> mixing You'll get all, it right. I'll get it right <laughs> one day, but um, even in the shorter term uh, period, you, we do have this nice trend line following the stock down. And if I zoom in on the weekly chart, look at this, we came out of low, we had one or two weeks up, or three weeks up, sorry, and last week it completely reversed that move and it did it in the period where we had the start of the significant fall just prior in at the end of August. So right now, there's nothing to me saying that we've signaled a strong reversal with this one. Sure, watch it because it is, you know, at a level that could be support, but you need to see confirmation. Well, I, look, if you one on while you're talking about that, and I 100% agree with what you're talking about, if you look at volume, the downward moves have the higher volume and the upward moves have the lower volume. I mean, this is an upward move, but look at the volume. Yeah, terrible. It's like less than half. And then the downward move, which is the last bar, it's higher. But it's done that over this whole period. So that's just suggesting there's more sellers than buyers into this group at the moment. So again, that's why, you know, to me, I agree with you. It really needs to be a cautious. And the thing is, is what people, what often people we see is who are traders, we often see them they're trading on price alone. They're not actually seeing everything that's there on the chart. And this is a real big issue for a lot of traders. They see price move up strongly and they go, oh, I'll jump in on this. And they watch the chat for them or they've you know, found somebody on the, at the water cooler, so to speak, at work. And they go, oh, look at this stock. It went up 20% last week. Jump on it. And they're trading on FOMO, et cetera. But when you actually look at all the rules and tools around it and you put more of a confluence of stuff, you actually see what's really there not what you think might be there. And that's that really will keep you out of bad stocks. Right now, this is a bad stock. Mm. It's not showing us signs of any strength. It's likely it's swung the pendulum. If you have a pendulum for, from, you know, strong buy to, you know, strong sell, it's more onto the strong sell sort of side of it, not the strong buy. And that pendulum will move depending on the different things you'll see on the chart, not just looking at price alone or how much percentage it moved. And I see too many traders and people wanting to trade looking at percentage moves rather than what's actually happening. Mm. So it's a real big um, caution at the moment. Obviously, the market is looking really bullish at the moment. Obviously, we had a bit of a, a well, I wouldn't say a down week last week. It was up half a percent. But 
you know, we had financials down, we had materials down last week, but energy was up, healthcare was up. So we're a bit of a changing the guard mm. at the moment. So there's some great looking stocks at the moment and you've shown a couple here already. Yes, and it's not to say that um, mm. APA itself is one to definitely throw out the window, but no. it's just to say, hey, like you, you were speaking to, it's it, when looking at price, rather than focusing on the percentage of price, it's trying to identify and understand the language, the relationship between the buyer and seller, because really that's what it's all about seeing the relationship, a buyer stronger, a seller stronger, and where is it headed to next? Mm. That's the important point. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this edition of Wealth Within's Weekly Hot Stock Tips. Now remember to tune in to the live Australian stock market show on YouTube from 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday night. To find us, just type Wealth Within Live in the YouTube search. And remember to have your phone ready to call in live to speak to us so we can answer your questions. The number is 9290 or you can email into the show right now by sending your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au. Now, if you want a copy of Dale's first book, you can still get it for free. You just have to pay the shipping. You can order it from our homepage, wealthwithin.com.au. Now, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and thank you very much, Dale, for your excellent comments today. Well, my pleasure, Phil. I mean, you know, well done for that. I think those stocks are really good, I, especially like ASX. It's going to give you time to get into it, but mm. I do look forward to chatting with everybody tomorrow night on the Australian Stock Market Show live on YouTube. All right. Well, thanks, Dale, and thank you all for watching again. For now, goodbye, good luck, and good trading.